These new population numbers are based on the latest science demonstrating that the park can handle more bison. And I think it's also important to recognize that these bison also have access to a significant amount of habitat outside of Yellowstone, or at least they should have access to this habitat outside of Yellowstone. And so, um, and that includes a lot of winter range for them. And so I think that also needs to be included um, into this equation and should be part of a food limited carrying capacity estimate for these Yellowstone bison. So this needs to involve um, perhaps some other federal agencies than just the park service and the state. Yeah, and you know, just how bison have been managed over the last couple of decades, it has involved multiple agencies, tribes, um, and the state of Montana all coming together to manage this bison herd. Um, I think that's important because their, their range, their natural range does not stop at the park boundary. Um, unfortunately, this um, EIS process really is focused on the park. And so it will focus on what the park can do within Yellowstone uh, National Park itself. Um, but, you know, going forward, we hope that that will translate to coordination with the other agencies and eventually and end up in some management changes um, outside of the park as well. So what about the conflicts then that you might have between bison and people? There are some people who live in those areas uh, immediately outside the park there. Absolutely. I mean, this just goes to show that it's really important that folks living on these landscapes do have access to tools that can help mitigate the potential for conflicts. Um, one example is, is we have what's called the Yellowstone Bison Coexistence Program. This is a program that was started back in 2011. It's a collaborative effort between the Greater Yellowstone Coalition, Defenders of Wildlife, NRDC, Sierra Club, and we also um, work with Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. And the idea around this program is to help folks living in these communities um, to live with bison by helping to pay for uh, bison exclusion fences on private property to keep bison out of potential conflicts, um, to keep um, private property protected from any potential damage from bison, you know, gardens, landscaping, children, pets, and so forth. And that's, that's been really, really important. And I think a huge success in promoting tolerance for bison on these landscapes outside the park. And I think it's just really important to recognize that, um, you know, there's a lot of wildlife that, that moves in and out of the park that folks in these surrounding communities, you know, have, are, are learning to, to live with. And I think it's a matter of making sure that they have those tools to do so successfully. Going back to the tribes now, um, some of these proposals, most of them uh, call for a little more tribal participation than we have now and suggesting that there would be more bison shipped to tribal lands. Um, what does that do for bison and for the park? So the Bison Conservation Transfer Program is a really exciting a new program. Um, and the idea there is that disease-free Yellowstone bison can be identified through uh, a multi-phase quarantine process. Um, it takes a, a few years to go through that process, but then those bison can then be transferred to um, tribal lands and maybe even eventually to other public lands across the country. And what's so great about this program is this not only serves as an alternative to slaughter to manage bison numbers, um, it will help support restoring um, these, these incredibly special bison to tribal lands across the country. It'll support um, tribal nutrition, um, their economies and their way of life. And um, it's just a fantastic program. It's something that we are really excited to be a part of um, over the past few years. And in fact, this past year, we partnered with Yellowstone Forever and the park to help expand the facility within Yellowstone National Park to, so that it, they can take more bison in. And these are bison that would otherwise have been shipped to slaughter. And so we're basically diverting disease-free bison and putting them into this program so they can be used 
uh, for conservation and ecological and cultural restoration elsewhere. 